review breaking news throughout the decade. As you may know, years ago, Berlin, the Berlin Wall was built to keep the people in East Berlin. Families were separated, people were killed, and Berlin was a torn, torn city. Until November 9th of this year, East German government has recently announced that visits to West Germany are permitted. And just a couple days ago, the Brandenburg Gate was opened. Isn't that great? Uh, Germany will also be will be reunited again. Ger uh, families can see each other again. It just warms my heart. Wait, what news do you have to share? President Reagan was dedicated to opposing communism all over the world, but he took a particular interest in the insurgent Contras cause in Nicaragua against the Cuban-supported Sandinistas. While when the Boland Amendment was passed, it became very difficult to back the Contras whilst, while operating within federal law. Reagan told National Security Advisor Robert McFarlane, I want you to do whatever you have to to help these people keep body and soul together. The actual affair involves Iran as well, and this is how. In 1885, when Iran and Iraq were at war, Iran made a secret request to buy arms from the United States. Despite the embargo against selling weapons to Iran, McFarlane told Reagan that it would improve relations with Iraq and possibly Lebanon as well, granting the U.S. influence in the unstable Middle East. And now to Courtney in Panama. Happy New Year's, everyone. I'm here in Panama. Now, on December 20th, we began our invasion. It was codenamed Just Cause. The point of this operation was to keep intact the Torrijos Carter Treaties, which had, um, which the goal was to transfer control from the Panama Canal to the United, I mean, from the United States to Panama by the year 2000. George H. Bush, Bush has given four reasons behind our invasion here. His goal was to safeguard the lives of the U.S. citizens in Panama. Bush claimed that Nor Noriega has declared war between the U.S. and Panama and had, had threatened approximately 35,000 U.S. citizens living there at the time. With that said, there has been, there's also been many clashes between the Americans and the Panamanian forces. Other reasons for his actions include defending democracy and human rights. It's combating drug trafficking, and lastly, protecting the Torrijos Carter Treaty treaties, as I've mentioned before. We will continue to keep you posted on the events um, as they unfold. Now, back to Megan in New York. And now to the third, <coughs> with technical stuff. As you all probably know already, Department of Defense's Advanced Research Projects Agency first successfully linked computers using ARPANET in the 17... in the... 1970s, which connected four main hubs and allowed all of them to access each other's storage, software, and research information. Mm -hmm. Universities, army bases, and science centers then started to acquire computers to access the hubs, and the National Science Foundation decided to fund NSFNet, improving the system significantly. As users accumulated more and more, data traffic would too, so NSF created five supercomputer centers at Princeton University, the University of Pittsburgh, the University of California in San Diego, University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign and Cornell University. The nation is eagerly awaiting the developments of this new internet and we look forward to seeing them. One of the biggest sports events in the 1980s was the Miracle on Ice in the 1980 Olympic Games in Lake Placid, New York. The United States Olympic hockey team was an underdog going into the Olympics. The U.S. team was made up of amateur and collegiate players. This caused for an unfavorable chant against the Russians, who had won nearly every championship and Olympic tournament since the 1954 games. Really? That's incredible. Yeah, I know. The Soviet American teams were natural rivals due to the decades-old Cold War. President Jimmy Carter at the time was considering a U.S. boycott of the 1980 Summer Olympic Games that was to be held in Moscow, Russia. So for the U.S. to win would be a big win for the United States in a few different ways. As the clock ticked down during the games, the crowd grew tense. With only 21 seconds left in the game, the U.S. was leading by one. All they had to do was keep the puck away. Guess what they did? Kept it away? Exactly. They were able to keep it away till the buzzer sounded, and it was a proud moment for the United States. today by none other than Madonna. Uh, hi Courtney, I'm just so happy to be here. Yes, it's so great to have you here. We have here a music video from her first album, Like a Virgin, released in Sorry. 1985. Sorry. Oh, it doesn't seem to be playing. I'm, we're just going to be playing the music today. 
Uh, yeah, it was, it was just such, I love that video. It was, um, it was working with Niall Rogers. He's just the best producer. And it was, it really was a real life kind of experience. Oh, I bet it was. Yeah. So, um, your fans have been dying to know, how did you get where you are today? Well, Courtney, uh, I was born and I grew up in, uh, Bay City, Michigan. And, uh, when I'm the eldest of eight. And my dad, he's an engineer. And, um, when I was six, my mom died. But, um, then I graduated high school. And I got a dance scholarship to, uh, the University of Michigan. Uh, but after two years of college, I dropped out. So, why was that? Um, you know, college wasn't really for me. And I really... I really wanted to become like a, I want to become a star, you know. Put it <laughs> right, frankly. So um, I went off to New York. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that must have been so terrifying yeah. to be in that yeah. instance. It really is. Yeah. So. Um. So after that, I mean, like I've heard a lot of different things about yeah. how it, like you worked a little bit with your boyfriend. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, I just worked little jobs and then uh, until I started seeing backup uh, and I started doing backup dancing for uh, my boyfriend's band. Oh, nice. So then, I mean, back to your life story. Yeah. What are some of the things that happened? Like, I've heard that you um, were performing in dance clubs. Yeah, and... yeah, yeah. I, uh, I started writing and performing my own songs. Um, one of my first songs was Everybody, and that was performed by DJ Mark Kims. And he, he also helped, he was like the man who brought me and Warner Brothers together. Oh, yeah, we were, yeah, we were yeah, intro we were introduced in uh, 1982. And so then in 1983 my debut uh, record was released. And uh, that the album didn't do so well itself, but it had a lot of good singles like Holiday, uh, Lucky Star and Borderline. And so those yeah, they all made the top 20 charts. And so and then my second album uh, like a Virgin was released in 1984, and that that got to the number one spot. So that, that must was, have been such a yeah. triumphant moment. Yeah, it was really it was to awesome. have something like that happen. And then you also pursued a lot in acting. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Um, my manager Freddie, the man, he uh, he also worked with Michael Jackson, but uh, he helped me get on get onto the Vision Quest movie. I was just a, a nighttime nightclub uh, singer, but you know it led. Led on to some bigger roles. Oh, so what were some of those bigger roles? Oh, um, uh, I got a, a lead role in uh, Desperately Seeking Susan. Oh, that is one of my yeah. favorite movies of this time. Yeah, I really, I liked it. And so then, you know, after that, I felt I'm gonna try my hand in just like on stage acting. Mm -hmm. And so I, I did Goose and Tom Tom. There I met and married John Penn, uh, and we we co-starred in uh, Shanghai Surprise. But, you know, after a little under four years, we, you know, wasn't working, so we yeah. got a divorce. That was incredibly hard to hear, especially in the news and yeah. magazines. Having all that publicity on this divorce, I mean, it must have been so difficult. Yeah, you know, it really was, but um, I, put, I put a bit behind me, you know, I'm moving on with my life. And you came right back. I mean, you did Papa Don't Preach in 1986. That one, however, there was so much controversy yeah. involved. I mean, in 1989, when the music video came out for Like a Prayer, I mean, it featured burning crosses, and I mean, you kissed an African-American saint, and after that, the Vatican even censored the video, and Pepsi even drew out of their endorsement. Yeah. I mean, how was that to have to overcome? Yeah, that was, that was a sad, sad and hard part of my career. But, um, you know, the album itself still did, you know, relatively well. It, uh, it got fifth on the top 20 charts. So, you know, um, yes, there was a lot of controversy, and that was, that was difficult, and then losing my endorsement. But, um, you know, the album did quite well. Yes, it did. So, what are we expecting next from you, Madonna? <laughs> well, uh, Courtney, I can't be saying too much stuff, you know, but, um... You know, you haven't heard the last of me. I don't believe we have. Thank you so much, though, for sitting down with us on New Year's Eve of all days. Yeah. I mean, the ball will be dropping any minute now. So, Madonna, everyone, thank you so much. Ooh, Madonna. The ball will be dropping in less than two minutes, but we're going to do a very quick interview with Michael Jackson's agent.
came in last minute because Michael Jackson was Michael Jackson was unable to perform. He was uh, busy. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um. So what was his child life like? I mean, I hear that he had. A, I mean, for the most part, his social life was very um, out in the media and. Yeah. Nothing was private, because when he was started out as a kid, the cameras came in really early in his life, so he never really had a true childhood. But he's a great sport. He's over it. And, like, yeah. So, what are some of the things about... <laughs> so, what are some of the things that he's done when it comes to, I mean, his latest album with Thriller? I mean, what was it's, that like to work with the cast and just the entire album itself? We were all really close. Really? Were you guys, like, family? I mean, there was a lot of... Kind of. Kind of. Okay. Kind of. That That's wonderful. Um... <laughs> What are some of the things about it? Like, I mean, there were zombies in it. How was that to be able to be part of the cast to play that? We had so much fun performing with all those dancers. They were all zombie-like. They all enjoyed being dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was great. And it is the best-selling album of, like, all time. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's pretty amazing, and he's really, really happy. He loves performing. That's absolutely great, and yeah. we are almost out of time. Here uh -oh. we have the ball drop. It's almost getting ready to drop, so. Already? I'm no so more sorry. FaceTime? No more FaceTime. I'm so yeah. sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Oh, well, okay. And here's the ball dropping.